Hi, I'm Dr. Patty Vitt. I'm a scientist at the Chicago Botanic Garden. I'm Beth Nielsen with Nielsen Massey Vanillas. And we're celebrating our annual orchid show. This year, the theme for the orchid show um, kind of centers around vanilla. Vanilla is one of the genera in the orchid family, which is the largest plant family in the world with about 24,000 species. And it is in itself so complex. I mean, one single vanilla bean has between 250 to 300 different flavor components. That's really a so lot. So incredibly complex, just with that one little single bean. And the differences between those beans and the flavor profile of the different growing regions is also quite diverse as well. I mean, it's just like wine. We, we talk about vanilla in the same way because depending on where it's grown, what is being grown in the earth around it, obviously the climate, um, which it is only going to be grown um, in subtropics or tropical because it can only be grown 10 degrees above or below the equator. But, you know, the Mexican beans are going to have a different flavor note. They're going to be spicier. You know, when you think of Mexican food, you think of things more spicy because there's peppers being grown in that soil and have been for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So that gets into the, the flavor profile of that bean. And then Tahitian, which when you think of Tahiti, you think of some of those you know, glorious exotic fruits and, and flowers. And that is also, when you taste a Tahitian, you get that fruity and floral with you know, this real floral note, yeah. almost um, you know, very botanical tasting. Well, I'm going to be making uh, Thomas Jefferson's recipe for vanilla ice cream. And the recipe is very simple. He brought it uh, home with him from France when he finished up his stint as the ambassador to France. And uh, it's a very simple recipe, just a few ingredients, but it's, I think, the perfect foil for um, highlighting the different flavor profiles of your vanilla beans. Well, yeah, I see you have the three different ones, and you're going to be making three different ice creams. All the same recipe except for the vanilla, right? Yes, so that's right. One's going to be Tahitian, and one's going to be Mexican, and one's going to be Madagascar. Right. Fantastic. The first step in Thomas Jefferson's vanilla ice cream recipe is to take two bottles of good cream and put it on the fire. I'm using a single quart of heavy cream, and it's going to be put onto the fire. When you get really good quality vanilla ice cream, you see the little brown flecks in it, and that's the seeds from the vanilla. This is pretty slow. It has to come up to close to a boil, but not boil over. And then next what we do is um, take the egg yolks and beat them until they're lemon colored and a little runny. And that actually takes quite a bit of effort. This is a pretty labor intensive process. The more air you can introduce into it at this point, and the more smooth you can get this, the actually the, the fluffier the ice cream comes out. And so what I'm going to do is add a quarter of a pound, or just four ounces by weight, of sugar to the egg yolks and beat that. Right there. Bang on. Okay, so now I'm going to add the vanilla sugar to the egg yolks just a little bit at a time. And it's basically, it's going to emulsify in the egg yolk. At this point, um, the cream has heated to just below boiling. Um, so it's scald nicely scalded. And what we have to do is, we can't just take the egg mixture and dump it in to make the ice cream base, which is basically a custard. We have to temper the egg yolks first. So we'll take some of this cream, this heated cream, and mix it into the egg yolk mixture at this point. And now I'm going to give this a good stir and add custard, the egg yolk into this to make the custard. It really is a custard. It's a very loose custard. All right, and now we're going to bring this back up to heat, stirring, you know, not constantly, but consistently, I guess. Um, if you don't pay enough attention to it, the um, heavy fat 
molecules can kind of um, come out of solution in the cream. That's not really that much of a, of a problem because it, when you churn it in the ice cream maker, um, it kind of gets reincorporated. And the test to see if it's ready, if I'll show you that, if you have the custard on the back of your spoon, if you can run your finger through it and it doesn't drip, it just stays a nice strip, then it is cooked enough to go ahead and chill for a while until it's um, ready to be transferred to the ice cream maker. So after you chill it in the water bath, you'll know that it is ready because it really starts to thicken up a little bit. It actually starts the process of making the ice cream base into ice cream. And so at this point, you want to transfer it to um, an ice cream maker. And then you just put the top on. This is, the, this is my favorite part because I don't have to do any more work. I put the top on, I plug it in, I turn it on, and I'm done. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to make uh, Thomas Jefferson's vanilla ice cream. And just bear in mind that it all began with an orchid. I'm Beth Nielsen with Nielsen Massey Vanillas. I'm Ann Hines with Three Tarts Bakery and Cafe. I'm Paula Haney with Hoosier Mama Pie Company. Well, welcome, ladies, and thank, thank you for you. coming. And I know it was a very, very difficult thing to decide to do is, you know, come taste ice cream with me. <laughs> Easiest decision I made all week. So what we have in front of us is Patty earlier made um, some ice cream from a very old recipe from Thomas Jefferson. And he brought the recipe over to the United States. Mm -hmm. So we're trying this very old recipe. And she has done it three different ways. Mm -hmm. So she made the ice cream exactly the same. Mm -hmm. The only thing, and it was, um, she used cream, eggs, sugar, and vanilla. So the only difference between these three, and I don't know which is which, which will be part of our, <laughs> our challenge, is that um, one is Madagascar, one is Tahitian, and one is Mexican. So we're tasting the differences in the flavor profiles of those three different vanillas. Mm. It's very mild, but I love the texture. Super creamy. Mm. I think it's um, non-fat too. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Great. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yep, you were right. Mexican. Mexican. Oh no. So Madagascar, Madagascar is the, and then the Tahitian is the last and one. Tahitian. Oh wow. <laughs> I need to start getting Mexican vanilla. I'm just... I love and that. I was getting the spice note on the on the Madagascar. Yeah, I do get kind of that caramely buttery. I was convinced this was the, the middle one was the flavor. Mexican one. The creaminess that Madagascar mm -hmm. typically has. Yeah. Well, well thank thanks. you so much. Well, that was yummy. <laughs> You're not taking this away, right? No. Yeah. Okay. Feel free to finish that. Feel free.